Ready? Like I want to. Take a shot. Show like, the cup. Ah, <laughs> we should have taken a shot. I have whiskey. Is that good? Mhm. Mm okay, let's do one. Yeah. <laughs> hey, don't give me a lot. Don't kill me here. Ya no mames. No, the cups are little. Uh huh. Ready? Cheers. Cheers. Oh. To the soul. <laughs> to warm us up. Hello sunshines, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another interview. I am sitting here with the owner of Shop Desnuda. You guys have asked me so much to have her on the channel and I think the curiosity is her mysteriousness and I kind of got in a little vibe of that so I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to hear her story and be able to ask her questions and just kind of give you guys an inside look as to where, who, what, when, <laughs> and what happened and what got Shop This New That to where it is today. So without further ado, I am going to introduce to you guys Nena and as we always start, why the name Shop This New That and take us through your whole story girl. We are here for <laughs> it. So I'm the owner of This New That. My name is Nena. So why the name? So I didn't come up with the name, and <laughs> that wasn't me. The name was actually created two years before we actually started the business through a friend of mine, an old friend of mine. We were at a birthday dinner for myself, and I was giving them the vision of the brand, and she's like, you know what, girl, call it this new And I was like, genius, genius, genius. And it kind of stemmed, the name came seen from the neutrals and being free and all that stuff, but I didn't launch the business until September of 2021. I feel like it landed in a perfect spot for me because I went through a really really bad breakup, a relationship, a very abusive relationship and once I launched this Nuda was when I came back from San Diego. It was just like a freeing moment for me and the name this Nuda, like being free from something so toxic was the start of this Nuda. Do you feel like the name is a representative of you stripping yourself from your old self? and like starting new or was it something that stemmed from like you said a neutral color palette like how you dress because you dress very clean you have a very clean aesthetic you have a very clean look and uh so do you think it was more so that like your friend gave you that kind of inspo at first because of you your look and then later on it just really fit because of your current life situation yes yeah, so it came it stemmed from the actual color palette because i've always been a neutral girl but once i went through that relationship and i came back home i realized that i had removed myself from something so bad but even now where i'm growing as a, a as a person i have removed toxic people from my life and i continue to do that and i'm continuing to grow as a person so I think it all stemmed from that and like I said, it landed in such a perfect spot in my life to launch this business. And I'm such in a better place now. And it's it's been a roller coaster, I can tell you that. A roller coaster of emotions, trying to learn the business. It's crazy because I come from a public health background, from a medical background. I have a bachelor's degree in public health. We love a smart girl. <laughs> With a emphasis on maternal and infant health. I've always had a passion for that. So I never in the, my right mind thought I was going to own a business, but here I am. And then I also was a makeup artist for four years. Okay, girl. During my undergrad. While you were in high school, or while you were in college, I'm yeah, sorry. that while was how I would pay my books. Okay. <laughs> okay, so um, this new that started in 2021. So it's been approximately a year and a half in business. Uh, we did hear a little bit of the background as to uh, what prompted her to start the business. And it was just pretty much a renewal, I think, of herself and like it sounds like it was more you needed something that was yours because everything that was you and defining of you was pretty much stripped from you yes and stripped for good reason and i feel like um hearing her story and you guys will hear more is a lot of what has happened in her life and the way that things have come about i feel like god has really tried to show her that he's there and position himself in her life so can you take us through the story of exactly kind of what what you're comfortable with of course yeah. but what kind of happened in that toxic situation that got you to this place yes of course so i was in a relationship i was engaged for two and a half years but was with this person for six and a half years we were young i was in high i was freshly out of high school and going into college 
he we both lived here in the valley he moved long distance to san diego it was i wouldn't say it's a horrible relationship but we were so young and i was so naive to this to the situation i was in like the constant cheating the verbal abuse it was something that i internalized and i carried with me but i didn't know i didn't love myself enough to remove myself from that situation um, i think a lot of us can relate yeah you, you get stuck in this hole where you're like, oh, maybe he's doing this because he loves me and because he wants me here, you know? Mm-hmm. And he moved to San Diego. And the only way the relationship was going to work out, he told me if I was to move over there. So I, once I graduated college in 2020, I moved to San Diego and I was out there for eight months. But in that period of time, it was just constant cheating. Girls would show up to my apartment. He cheated on me with his coworkers. So it was like a, just a repetitive. Anything <laughs> that you guys could think of that a man could do dirty to somebody, he did to her. But because of the lack of self-love and I think maybe the lack of just having anything that was yours mm-hmm. and also the codependency of moving away. She lives here in um the valley so moving to san diego and knowing nobody just him it was like her only lifeline and then this is her first time leaving home and being independent so it's just a lot to carry i think that you were trying to process so many things at once while the person that you love was doing things that were very hurtful to you exactly and i think i just took a big risk to go out there and i broke the relationship with my father for eight months which is hard <laughs> because you were doing that and yes. you knew it wasn't good for you my dad didn't like him at all um so it was really hard on myself mentally although i was happy that i had my own space and place i was just already so stressed out with being in a toxic relationship and also having a relationship with my father and i didn't want that to influence my like work ethic when i was working out there so it was really hard for me um, but again I he cheated this one last time I came back home and that's when this move that came about and now we're here a year and a half later <laughs> so tell us about coming back home what what was in your mind what happened she did mention to me that she did register the name while living in San Diego but didn't actually do anything because that's when shit really hit the fan <laughs> so then things hit the fan and then you come home and I'm assuming you're probably eyes bloodshot swollen <laughs> crying for days crying for something that you know doesn't serve you but you're still allowing yourself to feel and all of these things so what does nena do when she gets home so i guess like she said i registered a business may of 2021 i didn't have an idea if i was going to go through with the business but i did register the name and i bought from mood the two rompers that she had launched and that was the only money i had saved to like actually buy inventory so once i moved back i didn't have anything no bed he kept everything nothing 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 and my mom was like i have your room still but it's full what's the shit so like (laughs) we gotta clean it out and i came back home with trash bags and my just my clothes and trash bags and i got home for three months and i cried everything out i felt every emotion possible smart girl because i felt if i was gonna go out and drink i was just suppressing myself and the emotions so i was like you know what i'm gonna feel everything i'm gonna cry it out so i cried for three months straight i was super sick and then one morning god said you know what get up that's enough it's time like i put you through all of this so you can grow as a person and it's time to show what what strength i gave you so i got up I started working on like um, tags for the clothing. I started sewing my own labels. It was just all desnuda, like that following month. And I told myself, I'm going to launch, launch September 24th. If I don't launch that day, I'm not doing the business at all. Mm-hmm. And so I had everything, the shoot ready. I did everything, all the photos. And the week, I was supposed to, I launched Desnuda. I only had like 150 followers on the Desnuda page. And my brother was, I was like, dude, I don't have like any, this <laughs> I don't have any followers. Like, how am I supposed to launch the brand with no followers? My brother was like, you know what, dude, like create a TikTok. And I was like, about what? He's like, your story about what you went through, how you came home, how you got left, you know, cheated on. And I was like, no one's gonna care about that, you know? 
Can you send me that so yeah. I can insert it? We'll insert it here for reference. He's like, he's like, no one's gonna care. And I was like, I was like, I'm, no one's gonna care. And he's like, dude, just do it. It was like 11 o'clock at night and I'm over here editing on TikTok and I was like, okay. So I posted it and the next morning I have over 900 notifications. So the business grew overnight, like following wise. And at least you had a platform yes. to launch to. And the amount of women that were messaging me, asking me how I found the strength to remove myself from something so bad was insane. I was like a counselor to some, to some women. I think that that's what's beautiful about social media and having like telling your story is like so many people think that telling your story is like so overrated or too mm -hmm. oversharing or something like that. But I don't think people realize how much it matters to some people because it makes a difference in somebody's life who's going through something similar that doesn't have the voice to share or doesn't have the strength to leave or is wanting to do something but can't it serves such a great grand purpose and this is where i'm saying that i feel like from hearing uh, just kind of little tidbits of her story that god has really tried to show you that he's there so that you can use the voice that he's trying to give you and he's trying to give you a platform and trying to give you all of these gifts um, and he's definitely showed up and that's I feel like probably step two in like you actually having the courage to leave then him showing up and showing you okay you don't have a platform but I'm gonna give it to you right now yes so that you can launch and you can feel like you have like because we crave so much validation I think mm -hmm. as being human Humans. being yeah we're human we crave that validation I think that there's no more there isn't a more beautiful validation than getting something from God because oh, that's yes. a true gift So I feel like he's been he shows up for you in your lowest points and in your points where you're starting to question or second-guess And I feel like all of you guys should take note of that because he doesn't miss if there's a seed planted in your heart It's for a reason if there is something that you're going through. It's for a reason just keep trusting keep the faith and i promise you if you will allow yourself to be open he will show up as just the same way that he showed up for her which is why i'm so glad to share your story yeah. but okay yeah um yeah like they say like rely on him for he has a plan for you that's yes. what i have tatted on my back and it, it's true like he had he was working through me to get to these women and like, I, I would sit in tears like listening to these stories on my Instagram and I was like I don't even know these people like and they're trusting me enough to share their story with me there wasn't much I can say to be like do this and that to get out of that because it takes the person themselves to realize that this no longer serves me so I have to remove myself from the situation but I would of course talk to them but like you know it's okay God is with you I promise you this is just a season it's gonna it's gonna be worth it at the end and I think it was more about not feeling alone yes yeah and so that launched um thank you for my brother my brother is like the genius behind business <laughs> but we launched that friday but before we had launched i got a job offer at a biotech company because i was still trying to work because it wasn't my only form of income the business and then we launched this new that we sold out of everything every single thing we sold out and i didn't even choose the pieces my mom did <laughs> Oh my god, your mom has taste, girl! Yeah, yeah these are the jeans, these are the, one of the jeans that we sold out in, the ones I'm wearing, our meet in jeans. And yeah, my mom, we sold out, completely sold out, and I told myself, I was like, damn, like, this is a, this is a blessing from God. But over time, it just started getting slower, because I, I was still trying to understand the business, and I, of course I was working for a company 12 hours a day, 7 days a week, and I wasn't putting attention into my business, and that started reflecting. I started reflecting there was no sales coming in so since i started with such a big outcome with the selling a big out, drop mm -hmm. and then the previous drops like one order would come in two orders would come in and i'm like oh, i should close the store then i should close the store and i realized i was just been putting enough work into it because i was working for a company um it got so toxic to the point where i just quit i didn't have a plan b no plan b the business was still slow and I put my two weeks in the next day overnight our sales tripled overnight and then our following oh, tripled overnight. Oh my god. Yeah. I got chills. Yeah, and then the next day my uncle died oh, in a car I'm accident. Sorry. In a car accident in the morning. And then I was like, Oh my god, like he's speaking, like he's telling me like keep going, keep going. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like today's my dad's death anniversary, so I'm emotional yeah. too. He's on my 
desk. But um, yeah, my uncle's dad taught me a lot. <laughs> it's okay. It taught me a lot to just keep going because he was that person in my life where he's he was like um very adventurous like he would just take the risk and i knew i was like and the whole time I, when i quit i thought of my uncle i was like i know my uncle but like she left like fucking trabajo like leave and i was like sounds okay. so much like my dad yeah just leave like and i was like oh so I, the next day when i found out he passed away and i was like this is a sign to just keep going like keep going and like i said the business tripled overnight and it got steady again like we started getting orders in my room was like filled like packages over here like clothing over there we and will show you guys around yeah. we will show you guys around she works out of here this is her bedroom this is where all her stuff is all the content comes out of here we will show you guys in this video her workspace so you guys can see so make sure you guys stay till the end <laughs> yeah so everything was full and i was like damn like I'm gonna keep going and I, I kept doing it. I kept going to buy clothes and mind you I do this all by myself I don't have a team. I sew my own labels on so every order that comes in I'm sewing everything So it does take a while for me to get that's a lot up. of love and a lot of passion yeah. But again to this day a lot of my people that I talk to my clients my customers It's they all relate because of my relationship my 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 traumas and I sit on lives if you guys don't know um, follow me on TikTok. I, I'm always on live. I'll always, insert it here. I'm always in, on live talking about um, just life. I try to be as real as possible because I feel like a lot of these boutiques that I've seen, like you don't really know who the owner is. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you're trying to figure it out. And it's like, okay, so who, who am I relating to? Like, who am I trusting with my money? And so I try to come on social media and I just talk and talk and talk and talk. I think it's because there's a huge disconnect or trying to, um i think people are really trying to figure out uh whether they want to be a big business or they want to be a small business yes. and people don't know exactly what they want they have like maybe um other influencers or like business coaches saying that if you want to be a big business you need to act like a big business you don't have to be personable you can be customer service oriented but not personable but then that kind of takes away from like being a small business yes. and like what this is and what it means to you mm -hmm. and it takes away that connection so i feel like i understand what you're saying that it creates a disconnect and and people don't know if they want to do big or small or in between and they don't know what to show so i'm proud of you for sticking to what you feel yeah is for you and it's been working for me the amount of and they always tell you when you have a business the people around you you'll figure out who the real people around you are and i've noticed that in my in my family and my friend groups like they're not as there they're not there as much as the people that don't even know you are and i realized that a lot of my customers are from new york new york um texas and colorado my top sellers i rarely get orders here in california like rarely and the amount of people that message me every day like i see your brand going to like others to like big stores and i'm like really like they're like yeah like i had this dream about you or They'll like message me on TikTok like, can you help me? Like I'm going through a really rough time. How, like, can you give me any advice? And I'm not a professional. I'm not a professional. And but I will sit there and listen to you. Yeah. Even though I don't know you at all. And a lot of people have met me at the pop-ups at the shop small store. I've been there a couple of times already. And a lot of people come drive all the way from San Diego to come see me. Yeah. Because they want to meet you. Yeah. So when they meet me, they're like, you're the same as you are in, on live. And I was like, yeah, that's just who I am. So I think just relating to people on that aspect of my relationship and they've seen me break down on Instagram or on, t on TikTok. I'm crying, I'm having a rough day. Like let's say I planned a launch and I was working so hard on this launch and it like flopped. I'll go on live and I'll try to push sales. But if I can't, I'll like, you can see like the stress in my eyes and they'll be like, what's wrong? And we'll always be talking and I just break down. Like, you know, when you put so much effort into a collection, it just flops. But when the moment you don't, and you launch it that's when it does well mm. and that's why I so you kind of allow people to see an inside look as to because entrepreneurship is very high low yes very high low so you allow people a kind of bird's eye view of the high and the low and the low yeah and i feel like that's crucial for me 
because a lot of people have seen me at my low with the TikTok post mm -hmm. of my relationship. Mm -hmm. So when they see me at my high, they're like, oh my god, we're so proud of you, like this, but it's not always butterflies and rainbows over here. Like, yes, I'm a business owner, we make our own schedule, yeah, that's the beauty of it, but there's the lows lows to this business and it's and it's hard and people don't like to show it mm -hmm. and i feel like even as an inf like influencers like they do the same way the same thing like how you were saying in one of the videos how influencers may have a big platform on instagram but when it comes to tiktok they have no following yeah because they have no personality because they have no personality yep and they, they have an image but not a personality, personality. so i'm the opposite i have a big following on tiktok but i don't have a following on instagram because you have a personality yeah and not necessarily you're not trying to sell something yeah. an image obviously you're trying to sell your My business <laughs> stuff yeah yeah but like you you know yeah. it's like you're just yourself over there yes yes and i know i love i like the way it's working for me right now it's slow because the holidays and stuff and but i just like i said like i was telling earlier like i was just in a rut for like a a week two weeks and the day before she had messaged me i was going through it guys i was <laughs> crying in bed i did not eat i was going through it i slept the whole day and then the next i told god that night if i should let go of the business let me know and if i shouldn't give me a sign and, she and then i and then i dm'd her i slid in her dms and i was like hey girl you were down for an interview or nah <laughs> yeah so she messaged me and I was like, okay, this is a sign. I'm not gonna close the store. She's not closing. It's just a rough patch right now. And I feel like since I do everything on my own and I don't have the help, it's harder. Okay, can we talk about, now that you've said that you had a rut, can we talk about the lows? From the beginning to now, what have been some of the biggest lows that you've felt in this business? Because the industry is always changing. Oh, yes. And there's always something going on. Yes. Always. always. So, Take me through at least a few of your lows. So I think one of them, in the, which was in the beginning, was when I started working. When okay. I started working and I had to, I started neglecting my business because again, I was working for a medical company and it was a super demanding job. I was working 12 hour days, seven days a week. So I had no time to go to LA. I would get out at like five o'clock at night. Go in at three in the morning, get out at five o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have time to go to LA and I don't drive. So that makes it harder. You don't drive? No. Why don't you drive? <laughs> I'm like, oh, this, this ain't New York, this is California. So I don't drive. Why don't you drive? <laughs> I suffer from chronic migraines. Okay. So I lose my vision. Shut up. Yeah, I lose my vision for like the first 30 minutes. And I get terrified of like being able, like driving on the freeway and like, I can't see. So do you not have a driver's license? No. Nah. Shut the front door. So everything I do is through Uber. Like I'll go to LA and Uber. So you have obstacles. Yeah. You I have obstacles and you're still doing it. I cannot believe that. I have to. And I, cause Can you guys hear that? I just want to say <laughs> that again. What an obstacle it genuinely is to not drive your own vehicle and be able to go to places to do this. Because not only are you thinking um, the expense, oh, because yeah. it's a big expense. Uh, Uber is not cheap. Especially doing it round trip and going multiple times. Especially if you want to restock something oh, or yes. something like that. But aside from that. The time that it takes and the limited accessibility that you have. That is such a big challenge. I'm so impressed that you're still doing it because I would have quit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I would have quit. I have no patience. None. I have, I mean, very slim. Too. No, girl, that takes patience. I have zero patience. So I'm impressed that you even yeah. do that. Wow, that's crazy. But no, I'm going to get my license for sure. Um, but yeah, it's been a challenge, but I still wake up. Every morning, 7 in the morning, I leave my house by 7.30, get there at 8.30, and just shop. I... That's crazy. Okay, so um, you couldn't uh, shop or anything like that, number one, because you didn't drive, number two, because you were working, so you were so consumed with work, work. that you could not invest time into your business. Mm -hmm. So that caused your business, I'm sure, to decline. When you don't invest time in your business, you're going to see it right away. Even missing a day or two oh, yeah. of doing something your business is for sure impacted there's there's no way around it especially being a small business so that was a point where you felt a low right yes. a low why did you start to feel discouraged or did you feel like you lost passion or did you feel like maybe you just didn't want to do it anymore like what was that low like it was more of like an overachiever low 
so in a sense where i got this job because my dad got me the job there at this company and i was like well i graduated college for my dad yeah because i'm an overachiever mm -hmm. um virgo so I, yes so we're she's a virgo what's your birthday august 30th okay virgo vibes so i was like well if i don't work hard enough for this company then my dad's gonna be very upset at me mm -hmm. so maybe i should like close the store mm -hmm. And that was like, okay, so maybe to, in order to make my dad happy, not make him look bad, I should just stay and go through it. Because I know my dad's going to be like, oh, make sure you get your insurance. Make sure you do this. Make sure you have a, a, a 401k. And I'm a like, backup plan. Yeah. He's like, because that's not, we can't do that with your store. Because my dad thought when I first launched this new dad that it was just like me going to the swap meet and selling clothes. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He didn't think it was like all online. Like a business. Yeah. 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 So he's like, that's not going to pay your bills. So I was like, okay, what? Well, and that means I have to stay. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was like, maybe I should just like slowly like let the business go. Um, but then again, once I started feeling, when I, once I started going to work crying and leaving crying, I was like, this is it. I can't do this. Like yeah. I would never work for a company like this again, or work for anyone in general ever again. So that was a point where I should have closed the store. That's why I felt I was gonna close the store at that point. And then another one was during summertime. I had this photographer reached out to me and he's like can I shoot your brand like I love your brand like the aesthetic and I was like oh I pushed him off for a little bit mm -hmm. and then I was like you know what let me create a collection and then we can see what we can shoot and he did it for free oh because he was offering for content yeah. probably he, like he reached out to me like a couple times and I just kept declining it because I'm not comfortable shooting like I've never been a model mm -hmm. so I finally was like you know what let's do it he's like it's totally free like I'll buy the space like I'll rent the space out for you mm -hmm. and I was like okay so I did that we worked so hard in this collection like we made such cute content flopped nothing sold enough. what do you think was the reason for that maybe the pieces that i was including to the collection maybe i didn't understand my audience enough so that was like i was trying to understand like maybe people want more colorful two pieces not you were trying to get back into the swing of yes. being Everything. in your boutique and like what people were looking for at the time or what your audience could expect from you yes and i feel like since it was summertime i don't do color mm -hmm. like i'm on neutrals so it was hard for me to find any neutral colored bikinis everything was like pink and like bright yellow and i was like i'm not bringing that in like i'm gonna stand next to my brand what i stand for and i'm gonna just go for the trend mm -hmm. so i think that's where I, it like hit too and yeah i was gonna be like you know what i should just close again <laughs> I, no i feel you i feel you i feel you because that's very discouraging especially when you made such cute content and like there's so much effort uh making content you guys is, is hassle <laughs> it's exhausting and let alone executing the content to for it to look flawless is like it's it's a piece of work if you guys have a boutique you guys know it can i get an amen if you guys have a boutique because you guys know that executing content is so hard especially um when you have like an idea and an image and like you want to put out great content it's hard yes. but okay so then the collection flops nothing sells what does nena do i started, started doing um tiktoks so I do TikToks on my personal page and I started doing um, vacation outfit ideas. Mm -hmm. So people like when I dance. So I do like a lot of dancing videos. So I did those. That helped push some inventory out. But even, even that wasn't like pushing out as much as I wanted it to be. So I didn't start, like all my summer stuff is pretty much gone and it's sold on Black Friday. Okay, so it, it barely cleared out, mm -hmm. which is not that bad. It's not that bad of a time frame, a good three months. It's not, yeah, it's not too bad. That's it's pretty realistic, <laughs> yeah. you know. It's pretty realistic. Obviously, you want things to sell out on a drop, but if it doesn't sell on a drop, three months is, yeah, you're still winning, girl. It's sold. That's mm -hmm. the point. You got your money back. <laughs> That's all that matters. That's true. And then another low would be like hmm, not having other heads to help me out because I wear like 20 caps at once and I get overwhelmed. So I can be, let's say I wanna film TikToks today, but I forget to order labels. Mm -hmm. And those labels take two to three weeks to come in, the woven labels. So it even if I miss it by a day, like that just holds me back a whole. It does. And also trying to post on social media. On my Instagram, I have a hard time scheduling that. And I'm like, I wish I had someone to do this for me because it takes time, like anything. Any time is precious. 
-hmm. like time is so precious so the times that i'm packing orders i should be packing orders i'm creating content to sell mm -hmm. so it's hard for me so i think that's one of my biggest lows right now just trying to find another head to help me out with but it's just like the store is so slow right now so i'm scared to bring someone on i think that we all have a place where we're like extremely overwhelmed and we need to make a decision for the better of your our business uh you can't do it all no <laughs> you can't and uh you can only do it all for so long in the beginning it's very easy to continue that momentum because you're excited about your business but when things start to get really hectic and very overwhelming is when you're already in the business and you're trying to maintain that momentum while still making labels, while still filling orders, while still going live, while still creating content, while still planning, while still buying inventory, like mm -hmm. it's just, then at that point it becomes exhausting and you start to lose your creative juice, you start to lose your desire, your passion for the business and it just becomes very overwhelming. Um, so I do think that if you're at that place, we all know when we hit that place. And I do think that when you're at that place, you definitely should consider hiring somebody on, even if it's like a family member or somebody, um, a minimum of 10 hours a week or something yeah. like that. Somebody that just wants some extra cash that can lift kind of the weight off your shoulders of the more repetitive tasks. Mm -hmm. And that will allow, 10 hours makes a huge difference. <laughs> yes. It'll matter, even if it's two extra hours per day, it will make a difference. So never sell yourself short of paying somebody that amount you know for two hours i'm sure you can pay somebody the whatever the minimum wage is for you know two hours a day they yeah. make like an extra 30 bucks a day it costs you 30 bucks all you need is one sale but you alleviate so much and you free up time to actually be able to sell but it's the thing i'm a control freak and that's where i kind of push like oh i don't i don't need help it's okay like i got it so that's my fault too. So I, I think business learn. owners can relate. I, I can. So my mom tries to help me. Like she'll come and pack orders, but it's like she doesn't do it the way I wanted to do. So I'll try to teach her, but she's just like, that's okay. Like I'm like, no, like it's okay. I'll do it. <laughs> Forget it. It's because we you have to let go of control. Yeah. And I think that the only way for you to let go of control sometimes is to not fucking look. <laughs> Don't look. Just let it get done. And if you just let it get done and you never looked at it, it never bothered you. And that way you can focus on other things, especially like simple things, yeah. you know? Uh, definitely, I also feel like it's an age thing. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, again, a very early on entrepreneur kind of struggle. Um, how old are you again, 23? 25. Oh, 25, 25. So I feel like it's an age thing. Uh, early entrepreneur struggle because once you get closer to my age, I'm gonna be 34 in a couple, days or weeks two weeks three weeks i don't know but once you get to this place you start to see how valuable time is and how much more you can be doing with your time if you just kind of accepted help and allowed whatever help you have to get better at the things that you want them to do uh you'll free up space you'll be less stressed oh, yeah. and ultimately <laughs> that's all that matters and i know you're not a mom or anything like that so that's probably why again you're probably not in the same headspace but you'll get there but the sooner you let go of control the better for your business yeah everyone tells me that they're like hire someone to do social media like forget it. like just give them ideas what you want it to look like and let them take over mm -hmm. i'm like okay so we're trying that this year 2023 we're gonna okay new year new her <laughs> new year new her new business goals period <laughs> okay so those are some of your lows you heard some of your highs already um with business double or tripling and things like that uh what is your vision for this new that i see your vision board right yeah. here i'll show it to you guys at the end of the video so make sure again you guys stay till the end for this new that i like i said i wanted to stay neutral and be that capsule wardrobe for every woman because i feel for me before getting into fashion i always would buy outfits for certain events Mm -hmm. You would use it once and that's it mm -hmm. and you're like you're wasting money first of all because you're never gonna use that outfit again So I wanted to create a brand where we I can bring in styles that can be used recycled over and over again No matter what you wear. It's gonna look different So I, I still want to keep that capsule wardrobe, but also add a men's line mm -hmm. oh, Okay, love yeah. that so every time I'm out and I'm wearing my hat or a sweater like a guy will stop me like hey like Where'd you get that sweater at? 
and I'm like, oh, it's my store. And they're like, oh, do you carry men's sizes? And I'm like, oh, no, like, unfortunately, no. So it, it's been an idea. People always ask me, like, I have guy friends that are like, dude, bring in sweaters, guy stuff. It's simplistic. Yeah. Neutral colors for guys. And I was like, okay. So that's an idea. We'll see if that turns into something. Um, but I want to do my own manufacturers now. Okay. I don't want to buy wholesale anymore because I feel like the wholesale district is changing so much. So, so much. And you can't really, f I can't really find styles that fit my brand. And if I do, they're so expensive. Yes. So expensive. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to sell this to someone? You know, you're buying at retail at, at a, whole, a wholesale at like $35 and you're trying to sell that when you already have your customers and what they're willing to pay for. What their target mm -hmm. um, price is and you have your target audience. So that's a big thing. Uh, that I'm glad that you said that. Obviously times are changing and the fashion store days from when I was in high school are not the same as what they are now. And it's a lot to do with import costs. Mm -hmm. Import costs, the way that the government is running the country now as well. Um, inflation. Fabric is now very expensive. When you hear the words $2 a yard, it doesn't sound like a lot to you, but then you factor in, it takes one yard to make a garment. And you say it's $2, and then you say, now you gotta pay the sewer, the cutter, the person who does the pattern, and you factor in all those costs, it easily puts you at like 12 minimum to maybe 18 19 dollars depending on the size of the garment to include the fabric uh, unless you're manufacturing overseas now manufacturing overseas is a lot cheaper but you have to buy very much larger quantities and again many people can't afford to make this bodysuit and make 200 of them or 300 of them mm -hmm. because it's not going to sell or they don't have the platform to sell it now big brands like nova and things like that can easily do that but when you're talking small business it's difficult you can make uh, collections here in the states at, a lo at um, lower quantities but the price point is going to be high. higher mm -hmm. yeah so that's why wholesalers aren't trying to be expensive because they want to be expensive they want to sell the shit out of their product just as much as you do but at the same time there's cost incurred and then also overhead mm -hmm. payroll those are all costs as part of them running their wholesale shop. And she's right. It is changing. A lot. It is changing. Even down to basics, if you guys are familiar, like ambiance with like the very cheap quality stuff is pricey now. Mm -hmm. I remember when things were like $3 oh, and wow. now they're like 7 8 12, in there. Yeah. yeah, and it's very poor quality. It's more, it's like more like just to get your customers in the door mm -hmm. because you have a cheap item, but now it's not even that. Like they wash it once and it's, Yes, it. and it just, it's for the gym or to a rag, a yeah, cleaning rag. It. Yeah, so I, I, I'm i glad that you said that. Um, so yeah, so keep going. You said you want to do your own um, capsule collections. So just continue to grow the brand in the neutral form and then kind of where my vision for the brand, my vision boards right here, it's to also bring in a little bit of color. Oh, okay. And stay in the neutral role. Okay. So muted, muted colors, um, like the sage, the mustard color. Oh, I love mustard. So colors like that, because people do ask for it, and since they do ask for it a lot, I'm going to give it to them, even if it's small quantities of it. Neutral colors, they're still gonna be neutrals, mm -hmm. but just muted colors. So that's my ideal right now, but again, I want to go into manufacturing, but I'm not a big business, so it's harder for me because it's expensive, and I created my own line already of bodysuits, and I made those here in LA. Even then, I had to buy a lot, and I only sold like, I bought like 500, 580, and four different styles, three different colors, and I only sold like 250 of them. Half. Yeah. So you essentially just barely made your money back. Yes. So that's where I was like, maybe I bit too much, then I can chew. And so I, I learned from that a lot. Mm -hmm. So my idea is just to continue to push to grow the brand, um, continue to do my content that I do, my lives, the dancing videos, the transitions, the outfit ideas, and see where I can take that because I don't want to go into like influencers. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want to do like PR. Okay. Because um, I feel like it's so unrealistic to me. Um, I've had girls reach out to me and be like, oh, like I want to support your brand, la, 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 but they don't follow me. I've sent a girl clothes and she blocked me. Oh. 
Yeah, she blocked me. I'm like, who is she? So we can tag her in the comments. I'm like, <laughs> she, who is she? She blocked me, and I was like, okay, so I never did it again. I did have PR last year. I had three girls, but it, I didn't see a difference. I really didn't see a difference. So, and I don't want to send people clothes that I never heard with my brand and like fake it. Because that's not what I want it to be. I want my business to grow organically. Got it. So being that you want your business to grow organically, have you started uh, to study your numbers, your analytics? Have you started to study uh, how to do Facebook marketing and oh, things like that? Sure. Facebook ads? <laughs> I've tried to do the Facebook marketing thing, but it's complicated. Like I've, sit, I've sat and like watched tutorials and mm -hmm. still. I mean, I do, but it's like, I feel like I'm spending more money on the marketing than getting the orders in. Yeah, so it's still a learning process. Yeah. So it's still a learning curve. Yeah, yeah. But what yeah. really works for me are like, be on live. Yeah. Just be on live, even if it's, like I'm in bed, and I'll be on live, and they're like, oh, so can you show me the new arrivals that are coming? And I'll like sneak peek. Like, oh, here, this is what's coming next week. And it's always like the main people that are always on my lives, and they'll be like, okay, so when launch date comes, it's sold out. Yeah, because you're already like showing previews and mm -hmm. people are excited waiting for the date. That's a really good um, marketing tactic, you guys, to show sneak peeks. Sometimes it can be a little risque, especially if you're like one of those people that struggles with people who are like, not necessarily copying, but like watching your every move. It can be a little bit risque if you have that problem. But if you don't have that problem, then it's really good to show your customers like previews and that way you can get an idea of what people are like responding to so that you can prepare yourself mentally to possibly restock that when launch comes mm -hmm. like or to be watching that specific item when launch comes uh, just in case you know mm -hmm. um it gives you a, some insight as to what people are excited about and it also allows the customer to kind of have it in the back of their mind because people don't make a purchase just by seeing it one time most of the time unless they know you know your brand or special cases but usually it takes like them seeing it two to three times before they're actually sold. So being that you're giving that sneak preview, it's like, okay, here's the first look. And then you do like a teaser uh, reel or whatever. And then there's the second look. And then come launch day or, hey, this is about to launch. And then the launch. And mm -hmm. then people are like, oh shit, let me get mine before somebody else gets yeah. what I want. So that's, so that's a tactic you're using. Yeah, that's been working for me. Um, or doing live sales. Okay, so what do you do in live sales? Tell us more about that. So instead of it being like, I've seen other brands do where they do it on their stories, like, mm -hmm. a live, like a story sale, I do it on live or I do like new arrivals on live only. Okay. So you can only get the new arrivals if you join the live. Okay. So that's been helping too. So what I do for the new arrivals, so I'll literally go to downtown that same day and get some like basics, basics, like essential pieces. How many viewers do you typically have on live? Uh, on my TikTok, it's like 500 plus. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, 500 plus. And if it's like super slow, which just has been recently, it's like 100. And that's on your business TikTok? No, my personal. Oh, on your personal. Okay, that's really good. My personal. And I'll just write a list of like all the stuff that I have, price everything before I go on live. And then I'll be like, okay, who wants this? Although, like, you tried on everything that I sell has to be tried on by me. I don't know why everyone likes clothes tried on on me. No, everybody does. So yeah, they like, want to see what it looks like so they can imagine what it would look like on them. Because I even put it on other models, and they're like, can you put it on you, though? And I'm like... Okay. It's because you've already made yeah. the brand yours, so it, that's kind of where it, it stems from. from. Yeah. So that works for me, so, like, I'll say... And I'll go ahead and just do the invoices, but we sell fast on, like, like live no arrivals. Good. That I'm glad. Like fast, and I'm like, I have to go back to LA tomorrow to get new stuff. So see, that's a tactic. So see, a lot of people um, struggle with ways to like how they they can sell, and that's something that I've never heard actually until today. We're only selling the new arrivals on live, and that's the only way to get them is being on the live, which gives you control of what you're selling, and you'll know how much you're gonna make mm -hmm. once it's sold through because you already have it counted, and you're counting that on the live. It's all gone. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's a really good, good strategy. Do you do like better pricing on live or? No, it's the same thing. Um, people are just like fighting for certain items. Love it. Love and they're, like, to hear it. I don't, they don't pay their invoice within that hour for the, those hours that I set. Um, I give it to the next person. Okay. And then they're banned from like future life. So you log it. Yeah. 
So you have everything logged. So yes, I have like a paper and I'll write their name and I'll like message me on Instagram, like give me all your stuff. And if I have their information, it's already in the system and I just create the invoice, send it to them. And if they don't pay it within that time frame that I give them, like I said, I just give it to the next person. And I always say like serious inquiries only because it's a process creating these it invoices. It takes so much work. And if it's probably be, like two, three hours after. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like they won't pay them and then they join another live and they're like, oh, I want this and this. So I'll just ban them. Yeah. Because then it's, taking time up for me doing this yeah and it's time consuming and you don't want to be wasting your time on mm -hmm. people who are not serious about paying their invoices when you could have actually sold it to somebody else who yeah. was genuinely interested in wanting to pay for the item i mean that's been working for me um what else has worked for me so let me ask you this why if you go on your personal tiktok to sell your brand and make these sales why haven't you converted your personal tiktok to your business tiktok and switched over your business tiktok to your name so that I, it's it more be, branded it used to be my business one but when i when i made it personal it started growing more right so then why why don't you want your business name to be attached to that tiktok rather than it being you because then essentially it's looking like um, it's more you're the influencer for the brand, brand rather than the actual brand. I never really thought of it. I'm just like I said, like when I had it as my business, it wasn't really like growing. Like I would make the same content I'm making now, and it just wouldn't grow. So do you feel like there? This is a great question. I think actually, do you feel like the industry is now quite a bit saturated? That yeah, that people don't want to follow boutiques or follow businesses. Mm -hmm. and so it's you're so saturated so i feel like people would rather follow the person behind the brand and see their real like day-to-day -day life than the actual boutique that's what i wanted to hear i think it's true and they can relate to the person better because what are you going to go into a boutique and just see posted clothes all day like i'd rather see like oh what is she doing today like what coffee is she making what is she eating and i think that well like oh what are, what, what jeans is she wearing like i'm gonna go see where she has them on her website yeah and that works for me um, i couldn't agree with you more it, it's worked so much and even at like the soirees like the small shop small soirees that i do they, they don't work for me no why do you think that is i don't know like i've had i have like pe maybe because a lot of my clients are in different states so you don't feel like people come to actually see you it's just whatever foot traffic you get from the soiree and i feel like the way that they set up the, the shop small soirees like all the good like all the known brands are all cluttered together mm -hmm. so when you're walking, like a favoritism yes i noticed that so like the other brands are just on the outsides and like if you're going for one brand and like you see the other three brands that you know of too you're gonna just stay in that area you're not gonna yeah. go around and shop. there's definitely a favoritism that happens at shop small sorry i noticed it a few times i went like three times and each time i was like Okay, and I feel like some of the businesses that are present shouldn't even be there because they're not small businesses. They're big brands. Mm -hmm. so it's, it defeats the purpose of supporting small business. What I will say that I noticed at Soiree is that things are far too expensive for it being an outdoor event. People mm -hmm. are unrealistic about their pricing for it being an outdoor. It's it, Essentially, it's a swap meet event. Mm -hmm that's what it is at the end of the day it's cuter it has a cuter setup it's more aesthetic it's on social media but i feel like a lot of businesses would thrive so much more if they were if they took a cut mm. a little bit from pricing and were more about the fact that they're out there you know and yeah. if they were to like accept cash only per se you know like um, to get that revenue in the door, I feel like they would sell a lot more because there's things that I saw at Soiree that were like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, and it's like at that point, I'd rather go shop at, I don't know, what's Zara? <laughs> yeah, Zara. I'd rather go to Zara. And I'd rather go to H&M. Oh, yeah. And talking about like prices, that's what, like what I'm struggling with right now because since the prices are so high with the wholesale, like I have to raise my prices. And I feel like that's why a lot of my stuff hasn't been selling. But that's okay online. Mm -hmm. It's but okay person, online, but in person, you want to make that sale. And I feel like that's what's lacking at those events. And also, to the fact that there's these big businesses there that are not small businesses that have no place in being there. It defeats the purpose, purpose. of doing these events, in my personal opinion, and being in this industry for 
as long as I have. I just don't feel like the setting is adequate to allow small businesses to really thrive. I know that it helps, but I also feel like it distorts the business owner's perception of what they should be pricing at at these types of events because at the end of the day, like I said, it's an outdoor swap meet. Yeah, so that's what I was thinking. Like, I'm, I don't think I'm going to do any more with them. I'm... Because I did another one, a private event, with Vicky the Fit Chick. Oh yeah, I've seen her before. I love her, I love her. So she did like a private event, but you had to pay to get in. So okay, she had see? A, she had a boot camp, and you paid for the boot camp, and if you got VIP, like they had open bar. You know? Oh, cool. So it was a whole bunch of Latina-owned businesses, and it was honestly a success for me. Like, I didn't sell a lot, a lot, but I made so many connections. Yeah, networking. So many connections and like she came around like every every single booth she bought something from yeah and she would just come and talk to you so that helped me a lot and a lot of people were selling a lot of people were selling which I love that and That's there was like no favorites anywhere it was just brands that I've never heard of and I would like to go look around too but at the shop small store like I have such a hard time and it's so far for me to go over there at, when they're in Downey or San Anita and I'm just like I'm literally here for five hours and like I'm selling like to six seven people yeah to nothing really mm -hmm. essentially and I, I've met people but I don't really go around and socialize because I'm usually by myself you're working yeah you're working essentially. Um, and people are like why don't you just socialize with these people and it's like I don't want to just like bludge into like put myself into that like that favorite area and be like oh i'm this person you know because they probably don't even care yeah they're just like whatever yeah so that's been like that's something another low of mine too from doing the pop-ups it hasn't really done well for me at all okay so now that we've heard um your like what you see for this nuda what you want out of this nuda um to come do you think that like, what is it in this year that's in your plans that's going to get you to that next place? Like, what do you have planned or how are you going to execute to reach that level that you want to get to? Hire What's in your plans this year? Okay, yeah, definitely. Step one, girl, we already talked about this. No, that's like my biggest yes. thing right now. Yeah, you need help. Um, hiring a team and getting my own place right now. Not like for my store, but for myself. Yeah, which you can run your business yeah. out of more comfortably. Yeah, so big thing like the number one thing I'm pushing for is a team if you guys can see, if you can see right here you guys will see yeah we'll show like, you guys I have like a picture of a studio yes you know because that's that's what I want to do and I'm going to make it happen I don't care who's gonna tell you me need one now. in LA because <laughs> you don't drive girl so that's why I want to do it like uh, just a place for me to work from because again my family lives here I have two little girls not mine my brothers so just having all that noise can get a little bit too much sometimes so just a team for myself and I love that I love that for you and how are you gonna do that if things are slow right now um I think just like you said like get a family member a fam family member but then it's hard because they say like family and business don't make sometimes but mm -hmm. we're, we'll see where it goes my mom has always been the one to be like then I'll help you just let me know yeah like, let me know what you need but then I feel bad because like she gets home from working her long hours from work but she's she's yeah. a mom that's what moms do I would help my kids at any hour of the day so she's like yeah let me so probably with my mom starting with my mom she'll jump on I told her I was like I want you to even become a co-owner of this new lab. yeah that's a good idea yeah. Why not? my mom has helped me so much with the store and also like getting over that like really bad place in my life where would we be without moms? Yeah. And then my dad, yeah, he's there, but my dad's very tough love. Mm hmm And that's what I was raised on. So, like, I'll try to, like, can you help me? He's like, I'm busy. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, dad. <laughs> I'll figure it out. You're crying. You're like, I'll figure it out. So that's how, that's just getting a team. And I think my mom will help a lot. Um, I have a sister, but... She has her own life too. Mm -hmm. And then my sister-in-law. She does help me too. My sister-in-law, she's one of my models. Okay, love mm -hmm. that. Um, but for the most part, oh, and I'm trying not to be the face of the brand anymore. Oh, okay. Yeah. So how do you think that's going to affect business? I don't know. <laughs> With the bodysuits, um, it was all models. I did not want to be part of the bodysuit collection. I want to be just the brain behind the collection. I wouldn't say it did like, per like well, well, but... I feel like people would always so ask me like, "Can you do the? Can you take pictures in the body suit?" So you don't want to be the model, but you still want to be the personality. Mm -hmm. So you want models, but you want to be the personality. So the collection drops, but then you're on live. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I could see it because it's it's a lot. I want them to be recognizable, like, oh, she models for this new that. Yeah, or just get to, like, for the models to, like, open up to my customers, too. Like, just have a personality as well, not just be the model for the brand. Like, there's more to this new that. For my customers, the name, a lot of them, like, hold that name very close to them. Because, like I said, like, a lot of them message me and be like, you'd have no idea how much your brand has helped me. Like it means something. Yeah, or a lot of them are, I only carry large and the body are extra large. But even then, like I had this, I had two girls. One of them is in Idaho, I think. And she's like, I'm on a weight loss journey. She's like, I don't fit in any of your clothes at all. But she spends 300 plus dollars every time. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's she's like, love she's like I'm that's like, genuine love for your brand she's like this is my motivation and she'll send me pictures of her weight loss journey like updates mm -hmm. like she's how like, oh, I'm this doing. shirt fits me now like it looks really nice on me yeah stop yeah and it's in, and like another person like you have no idea how much confidence you helped me build as of like seeing you post in like your bodysuits and because I'm free like I don't care you want to see my chi like go ahead like <laughs> you want to see like you're gonna see everything I feel Honestly. like when your content is women driven too it's like it's not like yeah so it's, it's not weird. a question yeah. like all my comments on my social media are literally like 99% girls yeah so yeah they're like seeing you be you and like breaking some breaking from that shell that you were in in that relationship because I was uh, wasn't allowed to wear clothes the what I wanted in the relationship I wasn't allowed to wear makeup I wasn't allowed to do anything because if I were to wear makeup I wanted to get attention oh yeah been so, there narcissistic so, relationships yeah, so been there even going to the grocery store like I would put some cute like sweats on and like a bodysuit and a sweater and you know, Oh, if I did my makeup more than twice a week, who are you getting ready first? for? Yeah, you're gonna go to the store. Oh, why do you ask me the same question he did? Yeah, that's literally it. Why? Yeah, and I'm like, why? Going to the store. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, guess I'll just look ugly so, every day. Yeah, so like with my business, like it helped me gain that confidence, and I'm still working on it. Like I'm still trying to gain my confidence as a woman, but it helps me a lot hearing it from other girls that I'm helping them that you're making a difference yeah and i i go on live a lot and i say this a lot i don't care if i'm not making sales that day like i guess i obviously i care and it's my business but what matters to me the most is the impact that i have on these women like that takes away from anything else any other problem in my life and if i get those messages and i'm just like oh, like this is so rewarding because i came from a public health background so my i want to help people your heart is somewhere too yeah. like even though you have your heart your heart is in this nuda and you have passion for it you also have your humanly desires yeah. and like your desire to help and obviously because you do spend time in prayer and you do talk to god then i'm sure that's part of the reason why you're like okay but i want to make a difference too like i don't just mm -hmm. want to be selling clothes all day because then it's unfulfilling yes and i don't want to do something that doesn't fulfill me mm -hmm. and when you start moving in life where you're not fulfilled everything out of your a purpose job mm -hmm. and this is i don't even call this a job this is like what fulfills me and i eventually want to go back into the public health field like even if i start a woman's nonprofit to help women and i can bring this nuda into this and create like i don't know a place where people can donate clothing or have makeup artists come on and like help these women gain confidence again so stuff like that it's gonna tie in my degree and with my business and like the word does new that like helping those women strip from something their negative thoughts of themselves mm -hmm. to become someone so beautiful is like super powerful like that's what i want the business to be i'm like sounds like me girl i'm like sounds like me sounds like what we do here which is i, I mean i love that um okay so if you were to uh leave the audience with some final parting words uh whatever you do whenever you lose motivation anything that you want to say essentially the floor is yours girl I'm just here to listen to you so tell the people whatever you want my advice to anyone any woman man this wanting upcoming business owner just do it just do it don't don't even worry who's looking who's talking shit about you just do it and just let God let go and let God because that's what helped me and the moment I had let go control of my life is when he took over and I don't have a perfect life by all means but I'm getting somewhere and it's been such a blessing she messaged me out of the blue it was like 
God was like, girl, here it is. <laughs> Take it. So I think just let go and let God. I love that. I love that. I think that that's actually, that's, uh, if you guys follow me, I'm sure probably on my personal platforms, but that was one of my, that's my actual New Year's resolution. Yeah, let go, is let to let go and let God and let, let full, let go of full control. And I'm a, such a type A personality like you. And I'm very much in control or want to be in control. But I've found that the more I try to control things, the more disappointment I experience. Yes. And the more I let go and just kind of live freely and enjoy the day mm -hmm. and like not be stressed about things that happen because things always come up in the day um, and just kind of just let it be what it is. I feel so much more peace and I feel so much more fulfillment. And I think that when you let go and you just really let Jesus take the wheel, how they say, um, you're allowing yourself to feel so much more potential than what you limit yourself to by trying to control what you're gonna do next. Yes. Yeah. Very true. I love it. I love it. I feel like we need that to fill the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and I try to share that on my platform too. Like I don't force religion on anyone, but that's something I do share. Like my, my beliefs. Just you. Yeah. Just yeah. you. Every part of you, which I love that you do share. But anyways, well, I'm gonna show you guys now her workspace. We're not gonna end the video yet. We're just gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna show you guys her workspace and just allow her to take you through her vision board and stuff like that um because it is just we are in her room so there's no necessity for us to do like a part two we're just gonna all include it in this video and uh yeah thank you though for sitting with me no, and taking you. time to sit with me and tell me your story and i'm really thankful and i'm sure everybody here is thankful i know um we don't really get into like the deep parts of business in terms of like the analytics or the numbers and stuff like that. But I hope that these stories kind of make a difference in some of your lives and in how you guys may be feeling if you're going through a low, maybe this would be the reason that you pick back up. Or if you were looking to start but you were hesitant, maybe this gave you the courage to start. That's what I'm hoping to do with these videos and these interviews and this platform and maybe one day we can dive deep into like the more business nitty gritty but for now I think I like just hearing you guys' stories <laughs> and like how this is how your business has changed your life you know and what you hope to come of it so yeah so let's show you guys around I'm gonna flip the camera to Nena so that she can show you guys around look at her she looks so cute <laughs> um so I'm gonna flip the camera I think we should start at the vision board okay yeah let's start at the vision board and she can take us through. Handle it, girl. Okay. So this is my workspace, but this is my vision board for 2023. I need to add a little bit more to it, but essentially, like I said in the video, I want to bring a little bit of color into the store. So this is what I mean by color. It's not a lot, but you know. Um, pass my driving test, because we're going to get our yeah. license. <laughs> and then, um, of course, get my office. I do want an office, even if it's an apartment, to have a separate room for my office want to be healthy, want to travel, and eventually want to get some uh, brands to reach out to work with. Because mm -hmm. I do have a little following, so I just take advantage of it. Um, and then here's my desk. Uh, I have my desktop, uh, my Mac, uh, iPad. It's not a big room, guys. I literally sleep and work from my room. But everything here is like my shipping stuff down here. Uh, Can I see your stickers? Oh, yeah. So I love that even though you're so small, you still invest in your business. Look at this cute little cup. I made that. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So stuff like that. This stuff is my thank you cards, random stuff, the business cards, all that stuff. So aesthetic. And Who made then, your logo? Uh, Some person on Etsy. Okay. And this is just like all business stuff, like tech stuff. Oh, scary. Close that. I'm like, close it. I don't want to see it. And like I said before, I do sh um, sew my own labels. So that was gifted to me the day I launched, the day before I launched the business. <gasps> yeah, because I didn't have money to buy a sewing machine. So. You've been blessed, girl. Yeah, so that is, I use that and I put it on the desk when I use it. This is just a miscellaneous area. This is all um, like business stuff, so like invoices, random cups that I give away to like random orders, uh, pictures. This is all the bodysuits from the collection I designed. There's a lot. This is all bodysuits right here. My printer, um, content I need to film for a brand. And then I share my own closet for the business. 
Love that. So this is all the inventory that we have. Some like leftover stuff. Um, down there, hangers, because of course I don't fit over here. And that's it. It's small, but it does does a job. So I'm gonna show you guys this side because this is this is the business side. And then this and is her personal side. This is my bed, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Let's face you this way. Better this light. This is my bed. This is my bed. Um, like I said, when I came back from San Diego, I came back with nothing. Nothing. And I clearly cannot. I don't have room for a bigger bed. So it, this is just how it's going to work for now. God will bless me with an apartment. So Yes, he will. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> I believe it, girl. Declare it. But yeah, that's it. My mirror. And then my, her name is Claudia. <laughs> hey girl and that's pretty much it okay yeah all right you guys well that's a wrap to this video thank you guys so much for joining us i'm so thankful again for having you on the channel and thank you for oh, thank you. allowing us into your space and if you guys have any more questions for her i'm gonna leave her social media down in the comments so that you guys can slide in her inbox and i'm sure she'll get back to you because clearly she says she um engages with everyone which we love uh something that i do as well and yeah thank you guys so much i love you guys and ciao